Hey guys, Wyatt Joswowski here from DripApps.com and welcome to part two of our three video series where I'm showing you guys how to keep your pipeline full. If you're in client SEO, one of the most important things is keeping your pipeline full, knowing where your next client is going to come from, having a predictable stream of clients and revenue, right? Now, it's one thing if you can go out there and magically pull in a client, uh, and then if you have no idea how you did it, you're not going to be able to repeat it. I'm all about creating repeatable processes, doing it once and then being able to continuously repeat that or be able to hire people that can repeat that. That's the best and easiest way to scale a business. Even if you're just starting out with client SEO, this is the way you want to think about it. The more leads you can bring in, ultimately, the more clients you're going to be able to close. So in part one, we talked about using an SEO audit form and running Facebook ads to that landing page. That's a great way to generate leads for super cheap. And also, it's extremely hands off. All you have to do is follow up with the leads after they opt in. Now, in this video, part two, I'm going to be showing you guys a couple ways to go out there and uh, you know email people based on email lists or mailing lists or using the page two method where you go and you find uh, businesses that are ranking on page two. But what you're really gonna learn in this video is the process that happens after you get those emails, right? It's not just about finding the right businesses to contact, but it's understanding how to contact them and get your foot in the door and get them on the phone. So the old way of doing this may have been something like just a cold calling process where you you literally go through a list and you cold call businesses and uh, you know you try to qualify one of those and turn them into a lead, right? That is uh, you know really not the best way to do it. It's not very efficient. Yeah, you might be able to pull in a client. Uh, but it's going to take forever. It's going to wear you down, and it's not something you're going to want to do for a sustained period of time. Even if you hire people, well, if you hire people, you want to make sure you're getting the most out of your money, and uh, probably with cold calling, you're not going to get great a great return, right? So how are we doing this? Well, there's a few ways. You need to basically get a list of people to contact. So you could go ahead and just buy an email list. Now, I want to put out some disclaimers there. Info USA is a good uh, is a good resource to use. You can come in here and basically buy a bunch of information, right? So you can buy mailing lists, email lists, direct mail lists, um, whatever kind of campaign you're doing. You can come in here and buy a list for it. However, do not buy a list unless you fully understand who your target customer is. That's going to be one of the most important things because when you're coming in here and you're coming to buy these lists. All right, so let's go to U.S. businesses. When you're coming in here to do this, you're going to need to filter down and select exactly what type of companies you want to target. All right, so industry, number of employees, sales volume. And so if you don't know your target customer, you're not going to get great results because you're going to get a, a list you know, with a bunch of random businesses and your conversion rate is going to be extremely low. You need to know what businesses are the most ideal prospects for you. The ones where you're going to get the best results, uh, the one where you're going to get the highest conversion rate. Maybe it's you know a company with somewhere between 10 and 50 employees. Um, so understanding what their sales volume is and you know whether or not we have to realize is these bigger companies, um, and I don't know exactly where the line to be drawn is. Uh, as far as buying email lists and stuff, this is not something I typically do, but it can work extremely well if you do it the right way. However, um, you know, understand that like bigger companies probably already have some kind of SEO um, campaigns in place. Maybe they already have employees or whatnot that are working on the SEO. So you know that you need to target you know more smaller businesses that uh, maybe have between a million and three million dollars a year in sales and they need help with their organic seo reach right 
So also industry, I recommend starting out with one industry, right? Instead of going across the board and doing a bunch of industries, I mean, that's, you're going to get a, a, you don't need that big of a list. You really want to narrow it down. There's a ton of small businesses with, you know, 10 to 30 employees that are generating one to thir- you know, $3 million a year, right? Um, so don't just do it for all industries. Come in here and understand what industries have worked best for you. Obviously, if you have clients already, then you know, um, you know, base it off of that. What are your best clients? Which ones were the easiest to close? Which ones were you able to help the most? Um, so maybe it's it's uh, dentists, for example, and you want to put together some kind of campaign just for dentists. Uh, maybe it's it's you want to do it just for um, I don't know churches. I'm just saying it's it's listed over here. Um, you know maybe it's for real estate agents, whatever it may be. Figure out who you're going to target, and you're going to be able to craft your campaign around that. You're going to be able to buy a bunch of emails for fairly cheap. Now, what you're gonna want to do once you have a list, um, let me show you one more one more way to get a list of emails if you want to do it for free. This is something I've shown before. It's the page two method. Basically, you're gonna come in here for any city location plus niche, like Tampa dentist, for example, and you're just gonna go to the second page of Google, and these are gonna be your prospects right here. Everyone listed here, even on the third page, you could do. But basically, you're trying to find um, you know, businesses that are close to getting on the first page, all right? So this would be a perfect contact. All we're going to do is come down here, look for a contact page, and try to grab an email for them. And we'll just throw it into like an Excel file or something like that, or a CRM that you're using. So looks like they don't have an email, but they do have a, a form here that we can submit. So in this case, I would just grab the URL for this page and stick it into my CRM or my Excel file. So uh, the goal here is that we're getting basically a list of our own prospects that we're going to email. Now, the name of the game here is volume. This is not going to work if you're only doing it for five people or you're only doing it for 10 people. You need to be doing literally 100 per day. You need to figure out what your sweet spot is, what your conversion rate is, and by conversion, I mean how many people are replying to you. Typically, if you're doing it right, you should be getting about an 8 to 10% reply rate. So that means if you're sending 100 emails a day, you're getting about 8 to 10 replies. That's a lot to work with, right? And you can hire someone to go out there and send these first emails for you. That's very cheap. That's very easy to do. Um, so... Basically, how do we get our foot in the door, right? So let's say we've used the page two method, we put together our list, or we went to Info USA and we were buying big lists. By the way, if you're really wanting to scale, you're probably gonna have to buy lists. Um, you know, but if you wanna just get started, and you, you know, these leads are obviously gonna be a lot more efficient because we can craft our messaging um, towards what they're doing, right? They're on page two. So our email, we wanna keep it short. The shorter your email, the better. If you send a big, long email, it's gonna come across like a sales letter, sales message, and they're just going to ignore it, and I promise you, you're gonna get a zero to about 1% reply rate. I've tried it before, okay, it doesn't work. You wanna send a short personal email that really, um, it seems natural, right? It doesn't seem like a sales message. So you might say something, uh, and, and by the way, the goal here is to get your foot in the door. The goal here is to get a referral or a contact understand that the people who are answering these emails or the emails that you get here are probably not going to be the ones that are making the buying decision they're probably not going to be the owners of the company um and, and or you know whoever's in charge of making those buying decisions for seo whatever you're selling right so your goal is to get a referral to the person who is in in the position to make those buying decisions right and that's going to be so much more efficient. You're going to, if you just try to cold call the person who maybe owns the company or something like that, or just send them an email, you're not going to get a response. However, when someone on their team refers them, says, Hey, uh, you know, Mr. Owner of this company, um, this person contacted us and uh, about SEO and they wanted to jump on a phone call with you. Right. And so doing that, now you're going to be able in a personal conversation with the person that you know is in charge of making those decisions. So when we send this email, keep that in mind. Don't try to directly sell the person who is on the other end of this email. 
try to get in touch with the person who is going to be buying, right? So say something like for these page two people, uh, you know, hey, I, I saw your uh, your website was on page two of Google. Uh, you know, my, my company specializes in helping, um, <clears throat> you know, dentists, local dental um, practices get on page one of, of Google and increase their organic traffic. Is there someone in your company that I can talk with about getting these results for you guys. Every time, like you're gonna get an eight to 10% conversion rate, a reply rate on that, I promise. They're gonna either, you know, CC in, uh, they're gonna forward the email to someone that is in charge of making those decisions or they're going to, you know, give you the email or the name or the phone number of the person who is in charge. And then you can say, hey, I talked to Tammy, she gave me your phone number. I wanted to talk to you guys about getting North Point Dental on the first page of Google. Boom, you're in the door, you're on the phone with a person who can now make the decision. Okay, so that is the goal, right? You're not going directly for that. You're not going directly to try to close a deal or anything like that. You're just trying to get on the phone with this, you know, with a person that is in charge of making those decisions. So I know I dragged that on a, a little bit longer than maybe was necessary, but I really wanna get the point across of what your first goal is here by this initial contact, especially when you're cold, cold emailing, right? You're buying a list here. You need to get a response. That's first and foremost. Cool. So that's how you can go out there and grab a list, email them, get them on the phone. And it's a way to keep your pipeline full, right? Because if you can hire people to go out there and do this, there's no limit to how many emails you can buy. Trust me, you can buy a ton of emails, right? So you wanna set a process, right? Like I'm gonna send 100 emails a day. You're not gonna mass email 40,000 people at one time. That's how you can burn through a list really, really quickly. You wanna send short, tight emails that are gonna get replies to about 100 a day. That way you know you're gonna get eight to 10 responses every single day. Then you follow up with those eight to 10 and you're trying to get on the phone with maybe two or three, right? And your first initial goal when you get them on the phone is to qualify them. Asking them questions, prying and figuring out about their business. Ask them what they're currently doing for SEO. If they're currently driving or tracking any of their organic traffic. If they know if any of their sales are coming from the search engines. Ask them how, you know, what percentage of their customers are finding them on Google or another search engine. Start to figure out and learn more about their business. Figure out if they've invested in SEO before. Figure out if they're currently working with someone. Figure out if they have the budget to pay for it without directly saying, hey, do you have the budget to pay for SEO? Instead, there are different ways that you can kind of get, them out, get that out of them without being so direct, right? You can ask them, when you start out, what's it going to take to go through this buying process? What steps are we going to have to take to, you know, to get you guys working with us? And, and so you can kind of leverage that to figure out the process that you're going to have to take them through. Right. And so you, there you can obviously once you get them on the phone, it's a lot easier. You can show them proof, everything that you've done, why it's so necessary for them to be using SEO. That's a whole nother thing, you know, sales. I don't necessarily want to get into that. This is more about generating leads. And so when you're buying a list of emails or you're going in using the page two method, those are not leads. Those are just a list of prospects. Once you use this method to email them and get your foot in the door and get a referral, now you may have a lead. And now you want to qualify them and turn them into a potential buyer lead, right? And that's when you imp in implement the sales processes, get them in your sales funnel and close them. So hopefully this video helped you guys. This can be a very, very powerful method and a great predictable way to keep your pipeline full.